All right. Good evening, everyone. Hello, my name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, and tonight we'll be streaming some regular mono white death and taxes. Uh, sorry for a little bit of the delay there. I uh, this is my spring break, and so I have some other plans going on. And uh, one of my plans just ran a little bit later than I thought it would, um, and that's fine. So, um, not. Anything really exciting going on here, I want to walk through a couple of specific card choices I'm making and why why I'm doing it. Uh, there are a handful of mono-white builds. Tonight I am playing kind of like the most generic of generic builds. It has a 2-2 two -two split of Marin Crusader to Sarah Avenger, as well as a prelate in the flex slot. Everything else in the main is very, very stock. Um, since we have, like, Avengers and Crusaders, and Flickerwists, as well as all these humans. I am opting to just run two more planes over Cavern of Souls. This makes the, the Miracles matchup in particular a little bit worse, um, and to, I guess, some extent, like the random blue matchups, but it gives us more resiliency against uh, opposing Wastelands from Delver decks. Uh, and this main deck is, is very well suited to beat Delver, with more basics that can't be disrupted, more flyers, uh, you know, crusaders for anglers, and a prelate to just go and randomly lock them off. Uh, the sideboard as well has like some nods to Delver with triple path to exile serving as additional removal spells. I'm also playing a, another recruiter of the guard in the sideboard, largely to fetch up like more copies of Marin Crusader and Flicker Wisp in, uh, in things like the Grixis. Uh, matchups, or the check pile matchup, sorry. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into things and just kind of jam some games tonight. I uh, want to just get playing as soon as possible. Uh, I have some other things going on that I do need to attend to uh, on somewhat of a deadline. S uh, sorry I'm being vague, I can't really talk about it, you know, for reasons. Uh, being a school teacher is sometimes somewhat, uh, limiting in what I can talk about on stream. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to tell you, I am, I am doing well. Uh, we're getting started just a little bit later than normal. Uh, but otherwise, no complaints. I'm on spring break. Everything is happy. <laughs> yes, Gudo, this is, this is because reasons. Can't talk about it. Is secret. Not secret, like Mono Black Control secret, but secret. Alright. How good is this hand? I'm on the play with a one land vile hand that's real good against combo, but I have a second backup vile if something happens to the first. Keep. Mono black can was a troll, right? Did I execute that so well that people aren't sure whether or not they were bamboozled? I think I did. Yes, uh, so... The, the mono black control deck was really just like an amalgamation of three or four casual mono black decks I've had over the years. Um, so most of the things that I were talk I was talking about were like real things that I have like gone and done with various mono black control decks, but in like pauper or kitchen table magic. So like all the things I said I've tried, I legitimately have tried those things and played those things. But when I was referring to specific matchups, that was that was more theory craft. Yeah, that that was a really fun evening. I'm really happy that we managed to go four one in one of those leagues. Yeah, I got a bunch of messages afterwards where it's like, is this is this real or are you messing with me? Because I legitimately can't tell because you're you're presenting so much data 
and and you're like talking about this deck in such great detail and like everything you're saying makes sense um we'll probably play that deck again though because that was really fun and it was not like it was about as good as i thought it was going to be like I, I do think that something in that general shell is, like, certainly legacy viable. I think the numbers are are really difficult to figure out, though. <laughs> I should stream slivers. Maybe I should stream slivers. Slivers is really frustrating to play against. Because those little dorks do a ton of super annoying things. And you never know what is coming off that ether vial. Alright. Yeah, alright. That's about what I thought was going to happen. So we're playing against Ant. We're on the play. And we probably win now. So we'll, we'll get to Revoker whatever artifact they play first. And then we have Prelate the next turn. <clears throat> yeah, so like, A50 doesn't mean anything, right? Like, any any deck that hits the right sort of matchups can 5-0. Like, I, I, I 5 0 would with, with Soldier Stompy. Does that mean Soldier Stompy is good? No, but we, we, we kind of ran hot. We, we were doing a lot of powerful things. And in Legacy, when you get decent matchups, you're doing powerful things, and you run hot, it, it is pretty easy to 5-0. Like, playing Soldier Stompy that night, I, I felt, like, untouchable at many points. And that's why I, like, started beating on my chest and ripped off my shirt when we, you know, exiled the third Eldrazi with our idiots. Like, it just felt great. Evening. Welcome to the stream. We're back to normal things tonight. Alright, does my opponent go off through the Revoker? Seems like they can, because they know about the Revoker. I may have been slightly exaggerating. Alright, opponent. Whatever you have from here, all yours. <laughs> like, I do have acting experience, and I am a teacher. I am really good at bullshitting. It, it, it is one of my life skills. I, I can put on a face and wear a mask very, very well. The fact that I am, like, absolutely obsessed with Vampire Nighthawk helps. Oh jeez, my opponent did not realize what was going to happen. One game one. In game one, they don't have any outs to a prelate on four. And that's why we see the concession. <laughs> you had to cover your eyes? Was it because I was so brilliant? Because I believe that. So 
So we'll be on the draw for the next one, which is considerably harder. So in, in game one, you 100% put it on four because it gets tendrils, and since they don't have any fatal pushes or anything like that in the main deck, that just wins the game. Like, they, they are done at that point. Literally cannot kill you. In the post-sideboard games, it's trickier. You, you choose between two and four. They shut off different things. Two has the upside of randomly stopping things like Abrupt Decay and uh, Echoing Truth, as well as like the Infernal Tutors and Cabal Rituals. Alright, so Swords of Plowshares is the first thing we cut. Then we'll cut some amount of the Stoneforge Mystic package. Probably not all of it, because Batter Skull's still really good against Goblins. So we'll probably, like, cut the Jitte. We'll probably, like, trim a Flicker Wisp, or maybe even two. Honestly, Flicker Wisp is just pretty terrible in this matchup. You don't want to cut them all, because you still want to be able to, like, Recruiter for one in the instances where it becomes important. Vampire Nighthawk's okay. It needs to be have Vigilance, though. And it needs to be white, and it needs to be a dwarf. Yes, you've got it. You've got it. You know what you're talking about now. Something like this is probably fine. Uh, until my opponent shows me their removal, I tend to board in Council's Judgment so that if my opponent is playing Dread of Might, I can just get it. If it's a dead draw, it doesn't really matter that much, because it'd just be a creature. And usually, if we're disrupting them, we're winning the game, and it doesn't matter what else we're doing. Well, I think this is the first time I've seen this conversation, at least playing out like this. Like, any, any time I play Aerial Responder, people make the immediate comparison to Vampire Nighthawk. It's so easy. A Flying Death Touch Lifelink Dwarf. Okay, whatever you say. I'd be interested in seeing the art for that. Alright, my opponent mulliganed. My hand is great. We have two different relevant two drops, so even if we get Cabal Therapy for Thalia, we're still going to get Mom with Revoker backup. Er, Revoker with Mom backup, excuse me. I already knew that the chat loved Jank. That's nothing new. We're D and T players. When we see a control deck that doesn't use blue, we're like, "Ooh, what is this thing? I like this thing. I need it in my life." Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. We're currently up a game against Ant. They were on the play. We'll see if they kill me or take my Thalia here. Fatal push by mom. I accept. Who man. My opponent is playing Fatal Pushes, that means they're less likely to have Dread of Knights, so I'll probably board out my Council's Judgments for a game 3 if we go to that. Uh, why do some Ant decks run Chrome Mox in the sideboard? Uh, so that they go faster than a Thalia, rather than trying to answer the Thalia. That, that is why.
I think I want to revoke LED. That way if my opponent has something like a Massacre, I don't lose Thalia and Canonist. Oh, oh Stunton, I am, I am very aware of that list. Uh, I, I might play that at some point. But if I play that, I just want that to happen. Like, I just want to, like, be in a goofy mood one day and just, like, play that deck. Uh, I had a ton of fun watching uh, Channel, Channel Fireball's video on it. <clears throat> oh, alright. I found it just concedes it there. They must have brainstorm locked themselves. Um, Albino Lion, it's possible I might not have up yeah, I did not update the deck list. Gimme give, give me thirty seconds, let me uh post a deck list there. Da, 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 da. Need to log into my own site so I can copy and paste my stuff. Oh, Abby, I'm 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 glad you enjoy my advice. I I saw that you started to stream as well, although I haven't caught you. Oh, Lewis, thank you very much for hosting. I really do appreciate it. Uh, so for anyone who is just turning tuning in, hi, my name's Phil Gallagher. Um, I run Thraben University, a site exclusively for Legacy Death and Taxes, and you know, unsurprisingly, that means that we mostly play Death and Taxes on this channel. Uh, we just won a game 2-0 versus Ant, and I'm just adjusting a description that is right below the stream here. Here is the deck list that we are playing tonight. Uh, I posted something that is similar in the description, but I don't want to take the time to uh, adjust it perfectly for now. Uh, I think what I posted below the stream is, is a card or two off in the sideboard. Uh, but I think the main deck is accurate or very, very close to it. But I don't want to comb through that right now. Uh, so for anyone who missed it, here's what we streamed with last night. Uh, this was this was my April Fool's Day prank for you all. Uh, we we streamed Mono Black Control uh, based around Vampire Nighthawk and Gifted Etherborn. Um, Funny that uh, that Lewis CBR is, is hosting me because he 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 scooped after I won the first match because uh, he was playing Delver and I just played like a bunch of like gifted Etherborns, Vampire Nighthawks, and I think my opener had both of the Fatal Pushes, and it was it was just disgusting. And he just he just scooped it up and, and moved on to the next match rather than put up with my BS. I'm so sorry I trolled you so bad, Lewis. You were one of the victims. I was a bully. Yeah, Lewis, I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, my hand looks great. Very, very happy about this. Um, so we're just gonna keep and see what my opponent's up to. I feel like I've seen them play ant. definitely feel like I've seen them play Ant now. Alright, opponent. You get one turn. Can you therapy me? Or just go off? One of those two should probably be yes. But we'll see. Alright, so let's update the spreadsheet here. So we're playing against Ant again. I'm on the draw. Probably losing this one. Oh no, opponent is brainstorming. That's interesting. So cast, Cascade Cody here. 
Brainstorming off Lotus Petal uh, might be a desperation brainstorm. How do you feel about a Pontiff in the side with two Cavern and Vials in the main deck to cast that? Um, Albino Lion, if you're interested in the math of that, I actually have an article basically about that exact thing up on Thraven University. Um, mathematically speaking, it is, it is poor. Um, it, it is very greedy to just splash a Pontiff off of two Caverns and Vials. Alright, so is this just like Infernal Tutor, Crack? Yep. Uh, but this probably has to be an Ad Nauseum. Storm is 6. Yeah, this is just an Ad Nauseum. So we're not 100% dead, just like 89.7% dead. What do you think about one Brimaz and one Mirren Crusader? Um, in, in a metagame with a bunch of Baleful Strix and a bunch of, like, Fatal Pushes and Culligan's commands, I like Mirren Crusader much better. Uh, Brimaz is way better against, like, Miracles and combo decks, though. Holy cow, what are you doing, opponent? How... Oh my gosh, they don't have a, an initial mana source yet. I am not dead. Wow. Wow, I'm not dead. <clears throat> Skillfully navigated Magic the Gathering right there. <laughs> uh. Alright, so we'll sideboard this. <laughs> We'll sideboard the same as last round, where we essentially bring in this pile of cards. Board out Swords of Plowshares, board out Jitte, trim down to one Flicker Wisp, and cut one Crusader. Oh, well greetings! I'm glad you could stop by virtually from Italy. There's a... A lot there on Thraben University, and it all, it always warms my heart when I get these messages from people all around, like, literally all around the world, who some somehow know, like, perfect English, and they're always like, Hello, Phil! Greetings, and thank you for everything you have done for me in the Death and Taxes community. It's It, it just makes me feel good. It, 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 it makes this all worth doing. Yeah, so, so, so clone, yes, technically speaking, they should take one more draw and see whether or not their next draw is Lotus Petal. Um, but, uh, they were pretty dead. Like, oddly enough, since they're at exactly one and we have the mom on the board, that's just rough. Um, I would consider keeping this on the play, because, like, this would be, like, turn three recruiter put in... Uh, Thalia off of Vile, but that's probably too slow on the draw. <laughs> Romario, you're killing me. <laughs> Ooh, this one's bad. This one's still terrible, but we're gonna keep it, because it has an inter interaction card. Boxall, you get it. You get it. Vampire Nighthawk does not see enough legacy play. Luckily, we got the 4-1 last night, so people know. They were just miss missing out on the last ride combo. <laughs> oh, are we just getting turn one? Nope, that's just my opponent playing out some stuff. After last night's stream, I bought a hundred foil Nighthawks. Did I make a mistake? No. Can only go up. Legacy staple. Casual all-star. People will probably try to thwart the deck to modern now as well. Like, the, the, the jig is up. Alright, so this- rest in peace is super anemic. In, in this matchup, like, it does things, 
Since my opponent has double LED, one of the like easiest ways they can go off is just like play a couple of rituals, Infernal Tutor, double crack LEDs, get past in flames and win. And I've shut off that line now. And now I'll get to wasteland one of their lands and play Stoneforge on my next turn. Alright, so so Fizzler, when you when you say mono black devotion is actually a deck, what do you mean by deck? Do you mean like pile of things you can legally play? Or something that is anywhere resembling a tier? Uh, Albano Lion asks, if I was going to play in the GP this weekend in Seattle, what would I play? I'd pl probably play the Red Splash and make sure my sideboard was really, really good for Delver. Nanashi Okami, thank you very much for subscribing. I appreciate your support. Now you can use my sweet Thalia emote. Alright, so this should just be like Infernal Tutor, Double Crack, kill me any number of ways. Like, it, it can just be like Infernal Tutor, Double Crack, Infernal Tutor, Tendrils, and then Bob finishes me off. Nope, not going that route. Just gonna try to do it this turn. Alright, let's look at this Revealed Stone. How bad is this? Oh, this is bad. That is like, literally infinite rituals. Now, my opponent just needs like, any payoff card and I die. However, they have not hit a payoff card. They just have infinite mana. Is my opponent just gonna fizzle again? They, d they don't even have... Okay, no, I, I guess they can like, brainstorm, try to hit a kill card. Um... I am not going to uh, sacrifice a land, no. <laughs> Sub for the Thalia emote and all the work you've been doing for Thraven University. Oh man, thank you very much, Julian. <laughs> so, um, Julian, I, I just wanted to say I loved your April Fool Fool's Day um, content. I was dying. I was absolutely dying watching that. Uh, I am through most of it. Uh, but I, ha I haven't got through through all of it yet. I've, I've still got one or two matches left to watch, and I'm very, very happy for that. So the the issue with the Pass and Flames kill right now is like there's still there's still no way to tutor, right? There's not a tutor in the graveyard currently. So, like, there is just no way to kill me yet. He had to find a way to kill me off the brainstorm he revealed. Like, this makes me feel like my opponent has the kill. Alright, let's get rid of this revealed zone. Oh man, my opponent is going to pass in flames and try to ponder their way to a victory. This is glorious. <laughs> uh, Julian, I don't remember if I, I commented this on Reddit when you started making content again, but uh, it is it is very good to have you back making content. Uh, you were definitely one of my, you know, sources of inspiration for putting together Thraven University. Uh, between you and Brian Cook. And I really wish there were more people like us doing the same sort of content. Alright, super dead. They got there. Alright, true question. If I told you I was playing New Emrakul, Blood Moon, and Nissa Vital Force in the same modern deck, would you think it is an April Fool's joke? If it was someone other than you... Yes, I would think that's an April Fool's Day joke. But since it's you, no, that's probably a legitimate deck you're playing right now. Ugh, never want to draw two of these. I don't actually want to draw one of these unless something goes wrong. 
Um, despite being like, I'd, I'd much rather just have like a turn two hate bear hand than this awkward vile hand. I'm gonna mulligan this one. I'm gonna mulligan this one too. Well, this is this is no bueno. This is this is not good. Well, this feels bad. So, so game one here, my opponent fizzled. Game two, opponent cobbles together a win. And game three... I, I assume we die on turn two. It feels like I die on turn two. Is this double dark ritual ad nauseum? Yeah. So, so Julian, if I don't know what removal suite my opponent is playing, I board in two council judgments in this matchup so that I can have answers to Dread of Knights. At worst, they can sometimes snipe a piece of equipment. Um. So that is that that is not a mistake. If in game two I go and I see Oh. If in game two I, I see something like a whole bunch of like chain of vapors and past in flames, um I, I board them back out. So Yeah, see like there's there's the dread of knights that I that I kept that in for. Um, so I, I just want to, like, look at this and just kind of analyze this a little bit. If my opponent just waits a turn, they can probably just go off with LED and Past in Flames. So I think they got just, like, a little bit too aggressive in continuing going. Like, maybe they're just so terrified of, like, me playing a turn two thing. But, like, I'm old to five. There's a very real chance that I just, like, have Stone Cold nothing. Yeah, I know. We we got both both of our matches against this player because they killed themselves. Um, game three opponent fizzles. I, I I think they just got too aggressive with their with their ad nauseums. I, I think in both games they they probably could have stopped at slightly different numbers or played slightly differently and like beaten me. Yeah, I I, I think like, right here, this is a great place to stop. So my opponent would have been at 6 life. They could have stopped, and on their next turn, even if I play, like, a Thalia, they they get to just, like, take that Thalia off the board. So I have to have Revoker or Canonist as, like, my, my turn 2 plays that matter. If I have a Canonist, they just, like, dump LED and then either Ponder or Dread of Night and, like, vastly reduce my clock and then try to find something else. Uh, um, and they have three turns. No, they have five turns because they're going to be at six life. Oh, uh, was my top card a land? Apparently I can't draw a card now. We'll pretend my top card was a land, so it matters. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Dark Confidant is particularly good in the, in the, the D&T against DNT. Like, I think you just want to, like, try to go as fast as you can, not grind things out. Like, that's why my opponent boarded in the Chromox, is to try to go under Thalia. But Bob does not contribute to the go under Thalia plan. So Swarmicide says, not sure if our opponent was experienced. Yeah, that that's that's very possible. Um, like you, 
you never know what sort of player you're going to get paired against on Magic Online, and sometimes you get some really easy wins due to your opponents missing some stuff or like approaching a matchup wrong. Hey, Hippie Long Ears, welcome. Uh, it's going very well. Uh, we're currently uh, 2-0, and we have played against Ant both times, and our opponent just decided to kill themselves twice in, uh, in, in round two here, so uh, feeling pretty good on the luckometer today. Imagine how this would have gone if uh, we had some thought seizes and some chains of Mephistopheles. I like what you're thinking there. Um, am I going to be at GP Birmingham? No, I think my next GP is Richmond. So Richmond is Legacy in August. I think that's the next GP I'm going to. Uh, I'm just kind of scanning my schedule. Um, I have the Baltimore team open in May. I have SCG Con in June. I have the, the GP in August, Legacy Open in September, Eternal Weekend in November, and maybe a couple other, like, randoms in between. Well... My opponent played Manalist Dredge in 2014, but that's the only data I have on them. Uh, I'm not gonna... <sighs> so my opponent chose not to play first, so they are on Dredge. So we get to Thalia them, and we're gonna hope that that's enough. Like, that's the best that we can do in game one, is stop them from ever casting spells. Alright, and there's a Chancellor of the Annex. Uh, we're gonna throw a Mother of Runes into that. <laughs> uh, I, I understand, Julian. That's... Somewhere between humorous and terribly, terribly sad. Uh, is the mono-white list in a better spot than red-white? Um, it's weird. The, the mono-white list is much, 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 much better against Delver, and the red-white deck is much, much, much better against Checkpile. So, a lot of times, like, a, a well-tuned mono-white or a well-tuned red-white deck will probably put you in about the same spot. A friend of mine once said, turn one Caracas into Mom beats 70% of the draws red-black reanimator has. Yeah, I agree. The red-black reanimator matchup is, like, crazy good because you don't even need Graveyard Hate to win. Like, if you just have a hand that contains, like, Caracas, Mom, and Thalia... Like, you probably just win most of those games. It just doesn't matter, like, what your opponent does. It just doesn't. What's the best splash for D&T after red? Um, black for Orzhov Pontiff, but probably just Orzhov Pontiff. Uh, the, the, blue spat, the blue splash is not particularly good or the green splash. But two or three different people put up some results with the blue list in, in about the, the last month. Uh, so if this game gets boring, I'll show you the blue list, because I've got it uh, I've got it pulled up, and I'm I'm actually gonna stream with that sometime pretty soon. What about black for Vampire Nighthawk? Like the way you think. And trust me, I have seriously considered this. Because Vampire Nighthawk is like the perfect card for DNT, right? It's removal, it lifelinks, it stabilizes the board, it's evasive, so it gets there with equipment. Like it is the perfect DNT card. But black black for non-humans is just freaking impossible. You have to get like real weird and start playing like Urborgs or uh, what what is the what like white black cycle land, uh, fetid heath. Uh, it, it does not work well. I've, I've tried. The man is abysmal there. 
Any Vencers in the blue list? No, the, the blue lists um, that I was looking at were playing True Name Nemesis, Stifle, and Vendillion Flick. Although, like, you can certainly get cute with Vencer Dracus. Like, that's super fun. Maybe not good, but super fun. <laughs> but Phil, it's not human or legendary. It's not gonna work. You can't tell me who to love! I mean, we can make the mana better. It'll be fine. Yeah, I know, Moxal. There has been a lot of dredge. I don't understand in the Deathrite Shaman world that we live in, but apparently it's fine. <laughs> so if you got to make a magic card for an invitational, it would be a human Nighthawk for one black? For two and a black? Um, uh, no. It'd be a legendary Flicker Wisp that only costs one white and is also a human. Too much. Too much. It's fine. There was an almost Flicker Wisp from a recent set uh, that I was pretty excited about, but it just didn't work out. Uh, so I have, I have two choices here. I can either get Batter Skull and plan on bouncing the Germ to get rid of Bridges, or I can get Jitte and plan on just killing one of my own creatures to get rid of the Bridges. Since my opponent can't Cabal Therapy me, I kind of just want to get the Jitte in case I whiff on lands. Yeah, that, 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 uh, that Vizier was so, so, so close. Ooh, Julian, that is a good piece of trivia. <laughs> oh, Phil, how could you do this? You were doing so well, too. You were playing mono black control, now this. This is just one letter different, right? This is MWC, mono white control. They're like sisters. My opponent gets too many bridges. I am I am going to get legitimately nervous. Because if they just like hit all of the bridges in like the next turn cycle and then like double sack Icarid next turn. Can they double sack Icarid? Do we have black black? We have a Street Wraith and a Phantasmagorian they can exile, so yeah. There's a very real chance that we'll just die to aggro. Despite the fact that my opponent can't cast any spells all game, that doesn't mean that I'm just, like, anywhere near favored still. <laughs> Mahano White Waifu Tribal. Yes. Ignore this guy. Maybe, maybe it's a waifu under all that armor. We don't know. I'm not gonna assume Merit Crusader's gender. Wait, my opponent is just giving me a chance to remove the bridges now? Like, ahead of schedule, remove the bridges? Because that seems great for me. There's no downside to this, right? Like, my opponent is just keeping me from putting the Jitte into play? So they're, like, trading my Stoneforge for two of their bridges? Deal. 
and then like I can block the Nether Shadows in future turns. Double deal. I don't even know if Flicker was has a gender. Like, is, is, like, weird moth elemental a gender? Because I don't even... Like, the, mo the more I look at the Flicker Wisp art, the more I'm confused by it. And I've spent a lot of time looking at this art. But, like, every time I look at it, I'm just like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, it's... I, I just need to, like, stop looking at it. Oh man, we can use articles from other languages to like actual, actually answer those questions. That's so cool. Excuse my, my linguistic nerd moment there, but like, that's super interesting. My, my opponent might have misclicked with bridge triggers and not gotten the two zombies that they should have had. <coughs> Ugh, excuse me. Alright, so we we have a couple of different things we can do this turn. I can just play a Flicker Wisp, get rid of a zombie. I can play a Mirror and Crusader and just like play something that can get through their guys no matter what. Or I can just like play the Jitte. The, the awkward thing is that if I, I play the Jitte, like next turn I'm, I'm paying two to equip with it. And I can't swing into the prized amalgam. Well, maybe I can. So that, like, I can first strike deal to remove a counter from Prized Amalgam, to kill Prized Amalgam, buff Thalia, and then Thalia has three toughness and still dies to the rest of the board if there's a gang block. No, destroy target attack creature. I can't land and Jitte equip in the next turn because of Thalia. So I'd, I'd be like two turns away from doing that. And I might give them time to get into another bridge. The issue is that if I play the Jitte, I can't actually, like, Jitte equip and play another creature unless I rip a mom. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Jitte, though. Because if I get rid of all of my opponent's bridges it becomes almost impossible for them to win. So I just want to enable myself to do that. So the, the issue with the Crusader is the, the land count, not the... Like, the fact that Crusader isn't good. So, so what, what I'm saying is there's no world where I play Mirror and Crusader and I get in with Mirror and Crusader next turn. So that's why I did not play Mirror and Crusader. No, no, it, it, it folks, it, it's the mana that is the problem because of the Thali attacks. If I play Mirror and Crusader for three mana this turn, Jitte is still in my hand. Jitte costs three mana. There are no ancient tombs in this deck, so I can't ancient tomb equip next turn. All right, so this is all sorts of annoying. So my opponent has no bridges though, so I just get to like kill something here. Can kill another shadow, but that just comes back. I think I just want to like prevent damage here. Let's kill an Icarid. 
Bert and Sheenie wish Stolly attacks. That's a good point you got there. Oh, people are confused because we had Dark Ritual last night and we had more mana. Yeah, but we mulliganed like 87 times because we didn't draw lands. So, there was still that. Yeah, killing the killing the zombie token was was better. I agree. I think my opponent has gone wider than us though by a pretty significant margin, unfortunately. The double prized amalgam trigger there is rough. Alright, so what happens? I... My opponent has double Icarid. Might just still be dead. So I block, block a pri prized amalgam. Use two counters to kill two Icarids. And I die. Oh, that's unfortunate. Right? Alright, so double check. Block this. Theoretical damage that's coming through is 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. Yes, I'm dead. Oh my god, a real stream, thank goodness. I don't know what you're talking about. Last night's stream was very real. We got a 4 1. Deck was great. Would play again. We have a changelog of, uh, of things we want to do differently next time. Alright, so we're playing against Manila Stretch. We are on the draw. Surprise. We lost game one. We're playing against Plummet. Alright, so game one, opponent wins through Thalia. Is Hooglin still wearing the owl costume? Real questions. Alright. Sword of Fire and Ice seems pretty bad. Flicker Wisp's not optimal here. Do I want to revoke on Phantasmagorian? I'm rarely fast enough for that to matter. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not sure if I'm actually supposed to keep Revoker in. Like, it stops Phantasmagorian, but like... They're going to Phantasmagorian before, like, for the first time before I revoke her, so maybe this isn't actually good enough. I cannot play Canonist. They're not casting that many spells. Trim one more Flicker Wisp. Uh. Alright, we are not going to quick click too... Qu click too quickly this time. Would you like to play first? No. Ah, uh, did we want the Cataclysm to get their lands? Like that. Good troll. Um, so, this plays a turn one vial. 
turn two Stoneforge, turn three Recruiter for Containment Priest. That is not unreasonable, especially since we get a free time walk and a free card. So we're going to go ahead and keep this, even though it's not the greatest. Uh, we have three Rest in Peace, one Containment Priest. So we, we're, we're keeping a hand that, like, effectively has Graveyard Hate in it. That's fine. And if we draw into anything that helps us bridge the gap until turn three, like the Path to Exile that we drew into, uh, we're, we're in really good shape. I think it is very dangerous to ever sideboard out lands in DNT because it's such a mana hungry deck. This matchup in particular might be one of the few exceptions where, where that might be possible. Um, but even then, like I still just need to cast like my two and three drops on curve. Alright, well, we're just masters. So, like, if, if you take a look at our, our deck, even, even in the post-sideboard gains, Julian, like, if I'm planning on, like, keeping hands that have, like, a Vile and a Recruiter, then in order for the Containment Priest to be a turn 3 play, I, I still need to hit 3 lands. And, like, similarly, Prelate is a really, really good card that I want to play on 3. And, like, I still have, like, Stoneforge Mystic as a Mana Sink in my deck. Um... I, I, I still don't know that I can afford to side out lands, even though Wasteland is bad. Yeah, who said that? Uh, end step top. Yeah, I don't know whether or not I would have passed my own mom to curve out. Like, this removes some guys, but I don't have a long-term way to, like, actually win the game. And, like, Prelate can stop Cabal Therapy or Dread Return, but... Eh. This... Let's try to find Grave Hate. Oh, thank you very much for subscribing, M-T-E-S-M. -E th thank you for your support. Alright, well, this one's gonna go back, too. This one has too many Swords to Plowshares. And also too many Thalias. And not enough lands. This hand is insane. I do want that land in case the game goes on and my opponent just doesn't concede or somehow takes the rest in peace because it'll let me contain my priest. Alright, Chancellor is solid. The rest in peace now does become a turn three play, unless my opponent, like, somehow produces a creature in this next turn. Man, how bad? How bad is your life when your best play is discard shambling shell? I'm sorry, opponent. So we win almost to five tonight. Yeah, because our deck's great. Even though we took Vampire and Nighthawks and all the other good cards out, the deck's still fun. <laughs> oh man, it's the Vengeful Pharaoh. 
All right, so for anyone who isn't familiar with this, whenever combat damage is dealt to you or a planeswalker you control, if that thing is in your graveyard, you destroy target attacking creature, and then you put the Vengeful Pharaoh on top of your library. Why didn't you slam the rest in peace? Chancellor trigger. Would have countered it, and then I would have been super sad, and the chat would have typed so many punts that we would have crashed Twitch's servers. Yes. All right. We did it. Up to the easy 3-0. So game two. Opponent concedes to rip. Game three. Opponent concedes to rip. Give me just a second to update my spreadsheet data here, because I didn't do it mid-round. Alright, so we're on the draw for that one and one, on the play for that one, and we win. <laughs> Both teams definitely played hard, but I played harder, because I, I, I played more magic cards, right? Like, I, I cast more cards, so I, I was playing harder, that's how that works, right? All right, um, I'm going to take 30 seconds here to refill my water bottle. I'm going to pull up the deck list. If you have any questions about the deck list, not that deck list, uh, if you have any questions about this deck list, um, feel free to throw those out there and I'll answer them momentarily. All right, okay, so good evening everyone. Hello, my name is Bill Gallagher. I run Thraven University and we're playing Mono White Death and Taxes tonight. I wanna just uh, answer a couple of questions from the chat. So why no Cavern of Souls? This exact list is geared a little bit more to beat Delver. So rather than playing two more wastelandable lands, we're just playing extra planes for stability. Uh, this makes uh, matchups like Miracles a little worse, matchups like Delver and Mono Red Prison a little bit better. Uh, why snow slash normal land split uh, for an opponent casting a predict targeting us. Uh, we, we split those numbers so that they are less likely to just hit in the dark when they just have to target me and name planes because that's the card that there are the most of in my deck. Yeah, uh, this main deck is really solid. Um, you know, there are a couple of different sideboard configurations. I've been relatively happy with, with this one. Um, to contrast, do I sit, no. Let me see if I still have another mono white build that has, like, the other sideboard. So ignore the main deck here, but, like, this is kind of your other sideboard option, right? You, you play a different graveyard suite where you run, like, Surgicals and Rip and Priest, then you don't run as many Path to Exiles, and then you have some open slots for some cards, like specifically for the mirror, like Sword of War and Peace. 
And then you have like your choice of whether or not you want to run Gideons or, or Cataclysms. I have been ice quaked in Legacy before. Legit has happened. I think on multiple occasions. I think I queued against the same guy playing Ice Quake twice. Ooh, how do I sideboard versus elves? Let me just like not go into another match and like talk about that. So which version am I playing? I'm playing this. Uh, so against elves, want priest, want canonist. Probably want Recruiter to find them. So these these four are the absolute yes. And then we have five other cards that we can consider. And it kind of depends on how many things I have that I want to take out of the main deck. Because Path to Exile on Wirewood Symbiote is really important in the matchup. Because that draw engine is stupid and really frustrating, and even if I stop like the main ways that you win somehow, like that still destroys me. As as you put it, when you just demonic tutor for a random card in your deck a couple of times each turn, I, I can't win. Um, now now that people are considering playing Progenitus again, I have to consider playing this card. Usually leave it in the sideboard and begrudgingly lose to Progenitus when that happens. Uh, so, what's bad? I normally get rid of Sword of Fire and Ice for sure. I, de like, depending on what the build is, I probably trim some number of flyers. So, like, Something like this is the easy four, and then I would consider some number of Path to Exiles. Um, like, it, it's awkward because every, every, every flyer that you cut makes it harder and harder and harder to connect, connect with Jitte. So... Like, by cutting a bunch of flyers, that means a lot of times I have to use, like, Mother Runes to get pro-green to swing in to get Jitte counters. Um, things have to kind of be going so right anyway. Oh! Oh my god, I forgot the Thalias. I, I was wondering, like, why something felt so wrong. Thank you. Yeah, so, it usually starts with Thalias, Sword of Fire and Ice, and then I trim some number of Flicker Wisps. So, um... Unsure if I'd, like, play all three paths... It'd probably be something like this. Sorry, I, I'm flipping back and forth in between the chat. I'm like, Some, something's off here. My numbers aren't working. Why, why is this so hard? Yes, the, the thought is. I forgot the obvious. Yeah, so I'd probably go the, these six in, these, these six out for elves. And, like, th there's still a lot of problems, right? Like, Batter Skull's still really bad in the matchup, but you kind of need to keep it in because... Even on non-glimpse draws, sometimes elves just, like, vomits their hand on the board on, like, turn three, or sometimes turn two, a lot of times turn two, and you just, like, have to have the batter skull in the deck so you just don't, like, die to random beats before you can just start playing magic. <laughs> oh, Julian, that's gold. Uh, so for anyone just listening... Uh, Julian said, I once told a guy to always kill my turn one accelerator. He nodded, and then next game goes turn one path to exile on my accelerator. Yeah. So, like, this is why path to exile is awkward in the matchup, because you never want to... Well, okay, maybe not never, but you almost never want to just, like, path to exile something like a Deathrite Shaman, because that's such a poor trade. And, uh... Yeah. So, if you're bringing in path to exile, it is almost only for Wirewood Symbiote, although sometimes you have to fire it off on another target to prevent, like, Heritage Druid from producing 3 mana or something like that. Why no Cataclysm against Elves? So, so here's the thing, right? You, you Cataclysm against Elves, you go down to one land, they go down to one land and one creature, which probably produces mana. Who rebuilds quicker? It's the little green men. 
So elves can rebuild much, much better than you. And there's also this really nice thing that happens when you try to cast Cataclysms against Elves. They just activate, like, Quarian Ranger, bounce a Dryad Arbor, like, activate two Wirewood Symbiotes, bounce a bunch of stuff through their hand, and sometimes, like, the Cataclysm sweeps a bunch of stuff off the table, but it doesn't actually get you anywhere. So, like, there there are games that Cataclysm versus Elves will, will randomly win you, but, like, in order for this to even start being relevant, you have to make it to four mana, which means things are already going your way. Um, I, I don't like Cataclysm versus Elves. Have I ever been blown out by Western Paladin? Is that the Destroy the White one? Yeah. Okay. So I have gotten blown out by a lot of really bad cards. Um, I had, oh gosh, this was like three years ago in like round seven of an open. Um, my opponent cast Gloom, which is a black enchantment that makes all white cards cost three more to cast. They played Gloom, and then they played a second Gloom. And I was like, why? And afterwards, he was like, yeah, I don't want to lose to Death and Taxes. It's just such a bad matchup. I figured this would do it. He was right. So I've lost to, to, to Gloom. Anarchy was pretty bad. Destroy all, uh, all white permanents. Um, there was a mono-red prison deck of some nature playing that. That, that got me good. Uh, so I've, I've lost my, my fair share of weird hate cards. But most of the cool kids just play... Uh, Dread of Night, because it costs one mana, because that's fair somehow. <laughs> yeah, I yes, I feel like I have seen your Elves Storm token. I, I feel like you shared that with me one of the times we uh, we met up. That's pretty great, honestly. Hello again, coin man. <laughs> oh, Julian, your your stories are, are are great, man. That that's gold. Um I I don't think I've had flash fire played against me. Um, I've played another part of that cycle, though. I, I've definitely played Tsunami in Legacy before. Destroy, destroy all islands. I was, I was just angry, and I was playing Nick Fit, so I threw, like, three or four Tsunamis in the sideboard and just, like, went to town on people. I'm not gonna say that that was a good idea, but it was really, really fun for me. Why do you cut Prelate versus Grixis Delver? Because it's really bad for the post-sideboard games. Let me explain, because it's taken forever to get paired. In the post-sideboard games, you have set you have like usually seven one-mana removal spells, and you want to put prelate on one in that matchup. So if you go and put prelate on one, then you shut off all of your removal spells. And then you can't take Delvers and Death Rites and Gurmag Anglers off the table and you die. Prelate's also really slow because most of the threats of Grixis Delver go under prelate. So a lot of times you need to use your mana to like stabilize the board or apply pressure to them rather than like trying to play a lock piece. So Prelate's actually, I think, very bad in that matchup. There are many ways to lose with DNT. Losing with DNT is easy. It's winning. It's winning that takes a little skill and not running into Western Paladin. Sand looks great. So we're on the draw here. Yeah, alright. So we're on the draw versus the scuba 96. So my hand has a vial and three different two drops and a jitte and a port. We've we've got all the things that I want here. Uh, 
I don't remember whether or not I finished saying this or whether I was interrupted. Um, but I, I board prelate out against any any flavor of Delver except maybe blue red. Blue red I might keep it in for. It's 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 pretty hot there. And our vial resolved. We'll see if we're playing against Ant for like the third league. <laughs> Just stone cold no, no turn one playing legacy from a blue deck. Interesting. Are you Grixis Delver? Are you Infect? Are you Jackpot? Could be Bug Delver. Doesn't matter what they are, we're just jamming a Thalia. My opponent really valued getting this vial off of the table. What does that mean? Does it mean they disrespect the vial? Does it mean their hand is soft? They didn't do anything on turn one. Does that mean they kept on the strength of a three drop? And I'm going to see something like a Liliana of the Veil or a True Name Nemesis in my future. The best generic play is Thalia. But I kind of want to just like take a turn off and play the vial here and grind some long-term value out of that. I think. If my opponent had lots of counters, like, they would have considered forcing the Aether Vial, right? Or dazing the Aether Vial because they were on the play. <laughs> oh, Julian, you're, you're speaking my language. I love, love, love Pulp Fiction. It is, like unquestionably my favorite movie. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Thalia here. The Thalia will probably die in some capacity, leaving the Mother of Runes free to untap, protect my Sarah Avenger, which will pick up Jitte, and then I can ignore the Leopold. I, th I think my opponent probably has some expensive card like Jace in hand, and at least one piece of removal that is probably not an abrupt decay, if I were to guess the contents of my opponent's hand. Oh, 
That's surprisingly annoying on a number of different levels. Alright, can I ignore their jitte? I can ignore their jitte, play my own jitte, flash an Avenger, block, protect, equip my jitte to Avenger, but that kind of all assumes that they don't have something like a Culligan's command. I don't think I want to wasteland them in the face of the Leobold. I don't think I want to give them a card. Like, I feel like my board is very good, and their, their board is so-so. So, this is happening. So what does taking him off this land prevent him from doing? Like, what would I care about? I would care about him playing something like a true name nemesis. Or something like land toxic deluge. So I... This wasteland is suboptimal. I'll do it. Chat, chat thinks the wasteland is right, so we'll see if chat's right. Do you consider a random card more powerful than a land in play? Um, if if the card if they draw a land, then like I'm very sad to have waste landed because I'm kind of like resource light myself. It's only if they don't draw the lands that I'm just sticking cards in their hand, and then like the attrition aspect of that does not matter at all.
Right, but lands and death and taxes are, are entirely different decks. And like a wasteland in the context of lands versus a wasteland in the context of of DNT are very different. Because I care much more about more, most of my opponent's cards than, than a lands player does. The uh, third trop seems a little loose. But I guess they value getting that hierarch in play. So I guess my opponent is playing like Bug Leovold a la Reed Duke's deck from a while back. So I can cast a non Sarah Avenger 2-drop, so I should go ahead and tick this pile up to 3 now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like we're saying Bant, but like they have Leobold, right? So it's not like truly Bant. It's more like Leobold featuring some white cards. Or Bant featuring Leobold. Alright, Baleful Strix is annoying. True name Nemesis here would be annoying, yep. So we're on a five turn clock to the true name Nemesis alone. Alright. Remember how I talked about like taking up my Aether Vial being a good idea because I could cast any two drop other than Sarah Avenger, the one of left in my deck. Punished. All right, uh, so we're going to lose the game at this point in all likelihood. So we're now forced to attack in with the Sarah Avenger to keep a pressure up, and then I'm going to have to protect from the Baleful Strix if they block, meaning that if they have a removal spell currently. They can remove the Revoker, get Jete online, and I'll die. Uh, but my prospects of winning this game are not getting better as the game goes longer, uh, so it is a line that I am taking. It didn't block. So for anyone playing along at home, this is a very unfavorable matchup. Um, it's really hard to beat a true name nemesis deck that also has equipment. And, like, kind of no matter where my opponent falls on, like, the, like, Bant, Deathblade, Breed Duke, Leovold, True Name deck, like, pretty much no matter where they're at on that spectrum, uh, it's not good for me.
snow. Alright. Super dead now instead of regular dead. Again, still obligated to attack with the Sarah Avenger to push damage. Um, a a Mirren Crusader would change the clock, yes. Here's to hoping we don't get blown out and die. But we're probably going to get blown out and die. Like, I feel like we're going to get blown out and die. Yes, the, the things like conspiracy and uh, all of those other side sets like that are only legal in Legacy, and that's how we get wonderful gems like True Name Nemesis, but also things like Council's Judgment and Containment Priest, so there's some give and take there. Oh man, opponent has Force and Blue card left. So, they did not have a removal spell, so... We're not going to just die to Revoker leaving the battlefield unless my opponent top decks the removal spell or top decks a cantrip to find the removal spell. You have Sword of Fire and Ice? Because if so, that changes the clock. Hey Tyler, thank you very much for hosting. Uh, okay, so, so that changes the clock so that they just have me dead next turn. I was actually winning the race as is. Never mind, I'm winning the race again. So... Oh no, I guess not, because my opponent can chump block with Stoneforge. No, it doesn't matter, because I, I get in for three in the air this turn, put my opponent to six, and then I get in for six in the air the next turn. So it's still fine, I've still got the win on board. Sweet. <clears throat> I'm not going to port here, like bounce Leovold and port, because I don't want my opponent to suspect anything. I just want them to think that everything is okay. Alright, 
So now we bounce the Leovold because we're gonna like target one of their things anyway. So like might as well just get some extra value. Whenever people ask me what's the best card in the deck, I say Aethervile. And then they ask me what the second best card in the deck is, and then I say Thalia. But after that, it's probably Flicker Wisp, because Flicker Wisp, he gets you out of a lot of shit that it, Moth Person, Elemental, Bug, Butterfly Friend, Flicker Wisp gets you out of a lot of, lot of weird, weird, weird spots like this. Opponent says GG. I'm going to tell him that it was a nail biter. <coughs> and they agree. That was that was really close, chat. Like I I don't know that any card other than than Flicker Wisp gets us gets us out. So, game one, narrowly race double TNN. Alright, so what do we have that's good? Not very many cards. Cancel Judgment, get in here. Cataclysm's probably pretty good. They're, they're a big blue deck, they need a lot of mana to function. They're gonna have, they, they probably have a couple of Jaces in there. Um, Sweeping a lot of their stuff off can be very potent. So we get three cards that answer equipment, one more recruiter to find them. And then I have to decide how I want to sideboard, because it's a real choice. Really, it's going to come out. That's easy. A lot of times I board out Swords to Plowshares in these sorts of matchups, because my opponent doesn't actually have anything that I want to Swords to Plowshares. Like, I don't want to get rid of a like Baleful Strix, or a Leovold, or a Stoneforge Mystic with these cards is just like bad value, and it doesn't answer a true name nemesis anyway. Um, like, pointing it at the Mana Dorks is okay, but otherwise these are pretty anemic. I'll probably board out some to all of them, and then trim one other random card, probably a Mirren Crusader. Like, it, it's really good against the green side of the deck, but very poor against True Name Nemesis. You don't like Cataclysm? Sure, like, if, if we don't play Cataclysm, like, I can keep one Swords to Plowshares in here. Like, these other cards I definitely want. The Cataclysms are, like, so-so. Alright. I'll go, I'll go with your suggestion and not play the Cataclysms. I beat a Leo, a Sword of Fire and Ice, a Jitte, and two true names? I'd much rather want Rest in Peace than Swords to Plowshares. I don't think Rest in Peace does enough in this matchup. So my opponent doesn't have a mana accelerator. They didn't lead on a fetch, they don't have a fetch. My opponent might just be landlight and just kept like a double land stoneforge hand. 
where if I just like waste them, waste them, and then start playing magic, I might get really far ahead. It's, it's obviously better to like get an Aether Vial down before you start wastelanding your opponent, but I don't know that I have time here. My gut feeling says waste them is insane. Uh, so thank you very much for joining in Octobit. So we are currently playing Mono White Death and Taxes. We are up a game versus sort of like a Bant Stoneblade type deck that also features Leovold. Uh, we're playing kind of a stock Mono White Death and Taxes list that has a mix of Sarah Avengers as well as uh, Mirror Crusaders. So this is probably the, the Stoneforge Mystic that I put my opponent on. So it's going to be a Stoneforge, Fetch a Jitte, I'm going to Wasteland a Scrubland. Oop, nope, Decay of Isle. Let's keep them further away from True Name and take them off of Cantrips. My, my my opponent still has four color of mana with two lands. How can you complain? In what weird way did we curve Mom into Angel? Uh, in in the, like, my opponent double abrupt decayed my stuff sort of way. And there was a Wasteland turn. Yeah, my opponent didn't have the turn one dork. So now we're in this totally awkward world where I have to guess whether or not my opponent has Umazawa's Jitte in hand because they fetched the Batter Skull, or whether or not they're just like afraid of the Sarah Avenger, so they went and got the Batter Skull to stabilize the board. It's just awkward that I have my own Stoneforge Mystic here. Because if they just have a Batter Skull, my Batter Skull, Ser my Batter Skull, Sarah's Avenger, or like my Stoneforge plus Jitte would be better than their Batter Skull. I think I'm gonna hope they do not just naturally have Jitte and name Stoneforge. Uh, yes, Andre, for a predict targeting us. Snow-covered planes and planes split hedges very, very slightly for that one weird scenario. So it's just, like, strictly better to play a split. Alright, so I think my opponent thought that I could name their fetch land there. Ooh, yes, the best part about snow-covered planes is for getting them on deck lists. Yes. I don't usually play snow-covered planes in real life for that exact reason, if I'm being honest.
now that Miracles is, like, popular again, I probably will the next time I play a paper tournament. Plus, I really like my lightning planes that I have on paper. And that's a non-zero factor. They're pretty. Feel free to wasteland me. I don't need this for shopping part. Actually, a really good draw because that brick walls the Stoneforge Mystic on the other side of the table. So now I'll attack in. My opponent won't block because it'll just like look like I'm just trying to like trade the body. Oh, no, they will block. Does that mean a true name nemesis comes down next turn? In which case I should just play Stoneforge, so next turn can be Sword of Fire and Ice and Equip? I think that's what that means. Alright, so there's that true name that I anticipated. Yeah, this, this matchup has been really insane. Like, it has been such a good matchup in terms of, like, showing off various interactions on, like, both sides of this matchup. And, like, this kind of shows you, like, the power of DNT to wiggle through the cards that are really good against it. So, like, my opponent can, like, equip Jitte, swing in, gain four life, go up to eight. Then, like... I, I poke with Sarah Avenger, that hits them for 7 back, and the Stoneforge is the 8th point of damage if they don't have anything else. So, like, my, my opponent is more or less committed to tying up 2 mana for the Jitte, and attacking and also gaining the life. Yeah, I should I like I should really consider just separating this matchup. That's that's very true. All right, so opponent is not dead on board now.
This one's going to get tight. I think my opponent misplayed by removing that second Jitte counter. I don't think they're supposed to remove the second Jitte counter until I point the sword trigger at them. Now that they pointed that at me, I think I'm supposed to shoot their Stoneforge Mystic so that they can't play an equip sword, and then I just put in Thalia. So I'm going to start by casting Athalia. Now we'll play Caracas. And I think I equipped the Thalia so that I have two different creatures that are both lethal threats, neither of which can be killed by Umazawa's Jete. After, after this match, I'm going to tell my opponent. Alright, so they say, they say GG. How do I message this person? The scuba was at 96. Sorry about that. That, that. that was such a good game, I wanted to make sure that my opponent had the opportunity to, like, see the other side of that matchup, because, and, like, with the commentary, because that was, that was amazing. Yeah, that would that would be the ultimate daggers. Like right right as I, I click play, Julian clicks play, I get paired against Julian, I cry, he ghosts me, and I like just like I drown in my tears. <laughs> just kidding. Julian is a man of honor. He would not ghost me.
No, Ju Julian would not ghost me. He would board in Cabal Therapy for some reason and then just like hit with Cabal Therapy anytime anyway. Because he is a fucking master. I don't know if you've watched Julian play with Cabal Therapy, but it's insane. His, his names and hits are awesome. I forget what it was for. There was like some absolutely crazy Cabal Therapy video. Uh, I, I think from like the Legacy Super League or, or, or something like that. Where he just like hit on Cabal Therapy like four times blind or something. It was nuts. Ooh, my opponent's playing Red Prison, right? I recognize this name. Yeah. I would like to play first. This one is not gonna do it. God, this hand's really bad against my opponent's deck. Not only do I have a Lotus Petal in hand, but I also don't have a white source, like a real white source, where my opponent just blood moons me. Oh jeez, that's embarrassing. Uh, keep. Well, that's going on top, because if I make it to turn three, I put prelate on four, and we're in awesome, awesome shape. Yeah, like, it's it's a bad hand, it's a risky hand, but, like, it's not bad enough to go back or anything. I've been bamboozled. This isn't Big Red at all. Do, do, we, do we give him a Y? Do we give him a Y in the chat? Or call him a traitor? Is great. All right. Well, we're on name one. We don't know what my opponent's on. One is the safest name. It's not the best name if they're just a combo deck. Big blue? I think that's an F0 level, not a legacy deck. I also bet Sneak and Show. Womp womp. So we have three, six, we have seven permanents. All right. Womp womp. Right, but like in the face of just like one random fetch land and a brainstorm, I'm not going to name three. Like that's a, a terrible play in the dark, even if like, Sneak and Show is a possible deck my opponent is on. 
that is an incredibly risky play with most opponents punishing that line. All right, so we're in the play there, and we lost. We lost to Pink Frosting. So game one, lost to, what was that, like turn three? No, it must have been turn, turn three sneak attack. Yeah. Or turn turn three, show Omni Emrakul. So we'll be on the play for the next one. Yeah, um, Omniscience is very, very, very hard to beat. Um, and that that's like made the sneak and show matchup absolutely terrible. Okay, so how are we sideboarding? Source plowshares out. Umazawa's Jite out. Probably trim the batter skull and a stone forge mystic and ship something like this. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you work through what happens if I bounce my opponent's Emrakul when they have Omniscience. <sighs> this is a slow but fine hand. So like... We get a turn two Thalia, we get a turn three Recruiter, which will probably get Leon Relic Warder. There you go, you, fi you figured it out. They would never just keep it, keep taking turns with their Emra cool. Who would do that? One extra turn's fine, right? Opponent gets to make a decent value play. So do I. Um, do I want to? Let's see. Batter skull. Fighter skull's out. Jitte's out. So playing the stone forge isn't great. It just gets me a sword. I'm just gonna start clocking then. Leon and Relic Order is for when they cast Show and Tell. So that I can Show and Tell that in and deal with Omniscience. It's fine. We only take 15 here and lose all of our permanents. That's fine. We can come back from that. Right, chat? 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 Well, I'm not going to wasteland them.
Well, I uh, don't think this is going to uh, to end well for me. Uh, I think I'm going to give him the second Emrakul. And concede. Alright, 5-0. 5-0 Dream died. We only got the 3-1. Or the 4-1, the sorry. Let me, uh, let me update some records here for a second. Alright, so that was play, loss. So game 2, loss to Pyroclasm into Sneak and Recool. And then I need to update my previous round because I didn't fill that out because it was just crazy close. Alright, so we're the play. We win. Alright, so game two, narrowly race difficult board. Okay, I'm all updated now. Uh, can I show the blue-white list? Yeah, um, I, I want to talk about this list and how we did tonight for like 30 seconds, and then I'll, then I'll do that. Okay, so generally speaking, I really like where this list is at. I, I think it has a lot of strengths. Uh, the, the basic lands feel really good. The, the sideboard numbers feel about right. There are still some, like, tricky matchups. Like, the Sneak and Show matchup is really, really, really bad now. Um, we, we weren't just unlucky there. I usually lose that one. Um, and this is a very vast departure from where the matchup was about two years ago, where it was like borderline a buy because it was so easy. Um, so I'm very happy with this. I would be comfortable playing in a GP or other large event with a deck list like this. Uh, it is about as good as the red-white list right now. Um, I'd probably personally play the red-white list because I'm really comfortable with it and just have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games with it recently. Uh, so as someone requested, here is the blue-white list that I'm uh, going to play at some point on stream. It'll probably happen this week, um, although for things that I can't talk about, a lot of my time might get tied up this week. Um, and if it ha that happens, it might wait till the weekend for me to stream this. Okay, so to, to just answer that question about the previous game before I talk about this, why was Priest not as good as Leona Relic Order? Because Priest does not stop Omniscience. Omniscience is the card that beats us. Like, I just, like, Stone Cold cannot beat Show and Tell Omniscience. I can wiggle through, like, a, a sneak attack pretty easily if my opponent just gives me an, another turn or two in, in all likelihood, but I just can't wiggle through a, uh, a Omniscience. So you get Lay on Relic Order to shut off Show and Tell for an Omni. Julian, great question. Why do you play a 7-5 split and not a 6-6 split? Because I keep forgetting, and I keep writing it down, and I keep not changing it. There is, there is no tactical reason there. It's not to, like, say, exploit a Moto Shuffler bug. Magic Arena looking at you. Um, so, yeah, this, this list is weird. This was a 5-0 list by Eggit. Uh, I guess it's been from about three weeks ago now. Um, just sort of looking to exploit the power of mana denial early on in the game by playing some stifles. So the idea is, like, stifle gives you another turn one play in addition to mom and ether vial. And if you keep your opponent even lighter on resources than normal, then judge's familiar becomes quite good. So, like, if if you stifle a land and then your opponent goes, like, second land ponder and you vial in a Judge's Familiar or something crazy like that, um, that can just, like, steal games. And True Name Nemesis is just a good card, despite how difficult it is to cast. My, my keep game two of the previous game? So the keep was, like... What, like, land, land, Thalia, so like, land, 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 Stoneforge, Thalia, Recruiter, X? I don't remember what the last card was. Like, that's that's a fine keep. Like, let me pull up that deck list. So I think the keep was, 
like something like three lands. I don't remember which lands they were. So I think it was like three lands, Thalia, Stoneforge, Recruiter, and some other card. So just kind of like looking at the deck, Thalia is our best way to buy time in the early game, and Recruiter gets us like Prelate or Relic Warder or Containment Priest, which are like our, our next three best cards in the deck. So, like, I don't, I don't think this keep is bad. I don't remember what the other card was. Like, it doesn't really matter what it was. Like, I would keep this as a six-card hand. So, can the deck give better game two hands? Yes, absolutely. Like, if I draw a hand that is, like, just full of like this this sort of stuff right here along with like thalias and revokers that's fine but i can't really afford to throw back a thalia disruptive hand that also has a recruiter so like let, let's even say that this hand is like has a tarot I, I boarded that out so like let, let's just say like the last card is something like this where like it's not particularly relevant um, like, this is still a fine hand and, and not bad enough to go back. Like, in, in a bad matchup, I, I think it is fine to keep a hand that has a solid game plan. And that hand had a solid game plan. It's, it's Thalia into a recruiter and then choose one of the various bullets and like pick an angle of attack that I wanted to shut off. What's the best paper artwork of swords to plowshares? Um, that's a good question. All I remember is mine are German. I, I upgraded a while back and I got German ones. So, I was more concerned with the language than the picture on them. Oh, hippity long ears, thank you. Thank you. That, uh, that is a, a necessary thing. Do I like Sarah Vendor? Yeah, Sarah Vendor's really good against Delver. It's just, it, like, it's worse in some matchups. Like, it, it's much worse against uh, Baleful Strix, for example. So, in the check matchup, check pile matchup, it's. It's much worse because of Baleful Strix and black base removal that Mirren Crusader dodges, but Avenger is fine. Alright, I'm going to see if anyone else is streaming some Legacy, because I'm, I'm starting to wind down here, and I'd love to throw a hundred people into some small streamer's uh, stream and make their day. <laughs> More concerned with languages than with the looks, something I learned from dating my previous girlfriend. <laughs> Alright, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Uh, so today is Monday, right? Yeah, so I'll be streaming again Wednesday night at about 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. If you enjoyed my content tonight, you know, consider following. And if you really enjoy what I'm doing for the, the community, feel free to donate or subscribe. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to throw you into someone's stream who is playing Delver. Night, folks. Uh, this will be up on YouTube a little bit later.